Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And today we're gonna to be talking about dark current and camera temperature, their relationship to each other, as well as their relationship to your image quality. Also, make sure to check the description of this video because I'm gonna have some reference videos posted in the description of this video to help you out along the way. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any upcoming content. Now let's head on over and learn about dark current and camera temperature. What is dark current? In simple terms, dark current is the small amount of electric current that flows through a camera sensor even when no light is hitting it. This is a thermal phenomenon which results from spontaneous generation of electrons within the camera chip. Since these electrons are produced regardless of light hitting our camera sensor, we call these electrons dark electrons. Just like shot noise, the variation of the collected dark electrons during each exposure is what we call dark shot noise, and this noise can be seen in our images. This dark shot noise is independent of signal level, however, it is dependent on the temperature of our camera sensor. Dark current can affect the quality of our images. It's more pronounced in long exposures, which are common in astrophotography, since we need longer exposures to capture the dim signals from our deep sky objects. The longer we expose, the more time our camera sensor has to accumulate these dark electrons. The result? Our beautiful images we're trying to capture end up grainy and less detailed. Since we cannot get away from longer exposures, what do we do to combat this dark current? If we compare a non-corrected image to a corrected image, you can immediately see the difference. This image here has been corrected for dark current, and this image has not been corrected for dark current. Side by side, the image on the left has noticeable noise, and the image on the right is cleaner and more detailed. So how do we combat and correct for dark current? To answer that, we need to understand what influences dark current in our images. The most significant influencer of dark current is temperature. The warmer the sensor, the more dark current is generated. This is why many astrophotographers use specialized cooled cameras, which significantly reduce dark current, thus dark shot noise. Cooled cameras have a built-in cooling system that keeps the sensor at a low, stable temperature, minimizing dark current. You have heard me multiple times in other videos mention my recommendation of cooled cameras since they make cable management and calibration frames easier. However, what you're learning right now is exactly how a cooled camera makes calibration frames easier. Also, this is how you get a cleaner image to start with, making processing a much easier task. So how does temperature affect dark current? Let's take a look at this graph here for the ASI 2600MC camera. Looking at the left vertical line of the graph, we have listed how much dark current we collect during an exposure. This is labeled as E slash S slash PIX, meaning how many electrons per second per pixel. Looking at the bottom horizontal line, we have temperature listed in Celsius. As we browse through this graph, we can conclude that the colder we make our camera sensor, the less dark current we collect. In other words, if we start at the bottom left, we see the coldest temperature and the least amount of collected electrons per second per pixel. And as we move through the graph, the electrons per second per pixel increases as the temperature increases. After all, dark current is temperature dependent. One thing I want you to notice is starting at the top of the vertical dark current line, the dark current measurement drops by half per vertical step in the graph. This should look familiar if you've been following the series. The dark shot noise, like shot noise, is the square root of the signal, meaning we have diminishing returns. Now, it's very tempting to think, okay, Tony, so the more I cool my camera, the less dark current I collect, meaning a better quality image and then go out and crank your temperature as low as it can go. Well, pump the brakes for a minute and slow down. This is exciting news, 
However, there are consequences to cranking your temperature as low as it'll go. First, let's discuss these diminishing returns because as you'll see, sometimes it's just not worth setting the lowest possible temperature. Let's look at minus five degrees Celsius on the graph. Minus five degrees Celsius sits right around 0 0.00134 electrons per second per pixel collected. If we move to minus 10 degrees Celsius, we're looking at right around 0 0.000612 electrons per second per pixel. That's a difference of 0 0.00728 less electrons per second per pixel of collected dark current. Now, if we look at minus 15 degrees Celsius, we're sitting at around 0 0.00024 electrons per second per pixel. Comparing 0 0.0024 from minus 15 degrees Celsius with 0 0.00612 from minus 10 degrees Celsius, we have a difference of 0 0.00372 electrons per second per pixel of collected dark current. In other words, just going from a set point of minus 10 degrees Celsius down to minus 15 degrees Celsius our returns on investment just diminished by almost half. Now, let's talk about consequences. If you crank the air conditioner in your house, what happens? Your electric bill goes way up, right? Your camera needs power in order to run the cooler, which brings me to consequence number one. If you're running on a battery pack, you don't want to use up the battery pack before you're done with your imaging session. The colder you set your camera, the more power it demands. Then, consider the diminishing returns we just saw. The colder you go, the more the benefit diminishes. Now, if you're thinking, Tony, what if I can plug into an outlet? Or, I'm not going to be imaging for too long, so my battery will last. Great questions. Here's consequence number two. Your camera is only capable of cooling your camera sensor so many degrees below ambient. Usually this temperature is displayed in Celsius and the tech cooling plate is good for anywhere between up to 25 degrees Celsius and 35 degrees Celsius below ambient. If you try to set the temperature too low, your camera cooler power will go and peg on 100% and your temperature will not be consistent since the cooler is beyond its capacity. So how do we correct for, or in other words, calibrate out the dark shot noise that we collect during our imaging? Let's see if you can figure this one out. So far in this series, we learned that shot noise is the variance of photons collected in each pixel from exposure to exposure, which is corrected for by stacking multiple exposures together, which increases the signal to noise ratio, thus drowning out the shot noise. We also learned that we can correct for read noise by capturing bias frames, which are the fastest possible exposures that we can capture in order to just capture the read noise of our camera and then stack those together to get an average of the read noise, which can then be subtracted out of our image. We now know about dark shot noise, which collects even when no light hits our camera sensor and accumulates more the longer our exposure is. If you guessed dark frames, you're absolutely correct. We need to be able to see the dark current and average it out in order to subtract it from our image. Ever wonder why you see that dark frames need to be the same temperature, same exposure, and same gain and offset as your light frames? If you've been following along in this series, now you know. For dark frames, we basically do the exact same thing as our light frames, only we have the lens cap on, which allows us to see the dark current. Calibration frames are all about subtracting out noise and getting an initial cleaning done on our image, which makes processing easier. Gain and offset affect noise and how the pixels behave, so they essentially set the baseline of our pixels for our light frames. This needs to be replicated for our dark frames in order to keep consistency. If we're not consistent, then we're not capturing the same accumulation pattern as we captured within our light frames. Dark current accumulates with exposure time and is dependent on temperature. 
So we need to match our exposure time and temperature in order to have the same accumulation pattern as the light frames. As you can see now, having a temperature that is inconsistent can affect the generation pattern of the dark electrons and cause our dark frames to not be effective. Wavelengths that match cancel each other out, so we need to be able to match our accumulation pattern in order to cancel the noise out. Finally, how do we know where to set the camera temperature? For this, we just simply let our camera tell us what it's capable of. In other words, the tech cooling plate is only capable of so much, and there are so many factors that can affect its effectiveness. If we have a temperature in mind and we see that the cooler power is getting to a pretty high percentage, it might be a good idea to raise the temperature a bit. Personally, I try to stay under 75% cooler power. This gives me plenty of room for when a warm front or a warm breeze comes in, causing the camera to need to increase the cooler power to keep up. If we're at 90% or 100% and a warm front or warm breeze comes in, we risk the cooler not being able to keep up, thus fluctuating our temperature. The frames that were captured with the temperature fluctuation, they won't benefit from the maximum dark frame correction effectiveness. And that hurts our image quality. So I hope you found this useful. If you did, do me a favor. That channel icon that popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any upcoming content. Drop a comment in the comment section. What questions do you have? Did you learn anything new or are you using a cooled camera? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.